everyone, I'm Kelly from Craft and the Cuppa. Um, I thought I would do a little video of my spinning journey. So I have got a, um, a spinning wheel. I've got the Ashford Kiwi 3 and I've done one spin on it so far. I've produced this bulk of craziness. There it is. I'm calling it Chunky Mix because... Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a mixture of <laughs> but the consistency come out a bit crazy. So yeah, a mixture of thick and thin, but yeah, it's cool. I'm happy with it. I'm now going to do my second spin. I'm going to spin up this lovely braided roving that I got from Wonderful Wool. Um, and it's merino and nylon. It feels so lovely and soft. I'm just wondering what I'm going to do with it. I've not unbraided it yet, but I'm just looking at this little tuft right here. And it looks like I might be able to strip the colours apart. And then maybe get it on the blending board and make it into Rolex. That's what I'm thinking I might do. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay never undone one of these before so this is the first time ever but it doesn't look too tricky I don't think I'm just trying to be really gentle because I don't want to pull anything apart <laughs> that I don't need to be pulling apart so just taking it nice and steady and unravel this Okay, I have undone the braid. And as you can see, the colours are going all the way through the whole strip. So now I'm going to very carefully try and pull the colours apart to keep them separate. And I am going to put it on the blending board, I think. Wish me luck! Ooh, it's a bit nerve-wracking, you know. Okay, so I have separated the colours, yellow, orange, pink, and well, this was blue, but it did have a little streak of each colour in it, and I just thought, ah, I'm going to keep that in there because it looks pretty cool. So that's like a mermaid kind of colour. That's what it reminds me of anyway. So now what I'm going to do is get them on the blending board and make some Rolex. I'm praying I don't mess it up because I'm still a total newbie at this whole thing. Um, so yes, wish me luck. Okay, it's blending time. So I've actually started making some Rolex already. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you my process of what I'm doing. Remember, I'm still a total newbie, so I'm still trying to find the right um, amount of fibre to use. I have been doing my Rolex already, and I think I might have done them a little bit thin, but I'm trying to uh, spread it out a bit because I've got my pink here, and I know just by looking at my others, I don't have as much pink as what I do the other colours. Oh, I don't know, actually. Maybe the orange is a bit small. Maybe that one's a bit chunky because it's got some extra stripes going through it. But anyway, I'm going to show you the process of what I've been doing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get my fibre. And I'm going to start dragging it along my blending board because this has got spikes on it that are facing upwards. So I'm just going to start from one edge and I'm going to draft it. So when you draft it, you're pulling on the fibre. 
and it's spreading and it's getting longer. So I'm just going to try and keep it as chunky as I can going down there and then I'm going to do some more next to it. I've been doing like a thin layer of the pink. About that. And then I'm going to take my blending brush and I'm going to gently brush it into the spikes. I'm going to start at the bottom, just gently brushing it in and blending it in like that. By doing this, you can also add multiple layers, but I'm just doing one layer today. So I'm going to use my orange next. I'm going to slightly overlap it with my pink so that it kind of fuses itself together when I brush it. Oh, look at that. It's lovely. Very nice. Just pull that off the bottom. Oh, it's not pulling too well. Here we go. Oh, no, it's not coming. Oh, there we go. I got it. I'm going to do another little bit next to that orange. And then brush it in. Not going too crazy. Like so. Next up is yellow. I'm kind of like, kind of doing it rainbow style. Although I don't have all the rainbow colours here. But yeah, I am going for like a rainbow effect. So I'm going to do another yellow. And then brush that in. I'm kind of just using the edge of my brush to do that. I find if I go in too fast and heavy, it can drag some of the fibres down and get a bit bunched up. I don't really want it to do that. I don't really want that to happen, if possible. If it does, then so be it. I ain't going to cry over it, but I'm trying to avoid it if I can. <laughs> so now I'm going to put the blue next to the yellow. And the thing with fibre, it's a little bit like paint. So when I'm overlapping the blue and the yellow, I can make the colour green. So it can add a little green tinge to where the blue and the yellow are together. Same with the blue and the pink, because I'm going to be doing pink again in a minute. Blue and pink can give off like a purple colour. So just be wary of that when you're putting colours next to each other. <coughs> that they can blend together to form a new colour. Right, going back to pink. Do another bit next to the pink. Brush it in. Nice and gentle. Oh, look, it got a little bunch there. Did you see that? It's not the end of the world, but I do like it to try and stay in lines rather than getting a bit bunched up. But it's just going to take practice, isn't it? Uh, this is completely new to me still. I've only done this a few times. So, yeah. Right, orange again. Just repeat in the colours. Oop, get over there. We do another little bit next to it. Orange. Let's pop some yellow in. so soft this is feels absolutely delightful <laughs> yellow let's brush them two in Let's 
be careful I don't catch my jumper on it. <laughs> that wouldn't be good, would it? <clears throat> and then last but not least, a bit more of the blue. Well, say blue. It's more like a, uh, it's giving me mermaid vibes, this is. Just do another little bit, but kind of drag it down there a bit, like, ugh, just to puff up that bottom bit. Blue. It's a bit thick at the top, actually, but what's done is done. Let's just go with it. I'll see, look, I just took my hand away and it just kind of bunched up a bit, but you can brush it down. Okay, I haven't quite made it to the edge, but I kept that one a bit thin, didn't I? Because I'm getting a bit low on my pink, that's all. So what I'm going to do now is try, is make a, I say try and make a row lag. Let's hope it goes okay. I'm going to make some row lags and I've got two dowels here to do that with. So I'm just going to like fluff up this section and just start gently pulling it away from the spikes just so it's easier to roll maybe in time I won't have to do that as much but for now I definitely do and we're going to sandwich this section in between the rods in between our dowels I hope you can see let me just check because I'm on my phone yeah you can just about see can't you so right what I'm going to do is go one behind and one in front and I'm not putting my dowels completely level. I don't know if you can see that at the edges or not, but I've got one that's coming in a bit more than the other. And what I'm going to do, because I've got quite a bit of fluff at the bottom, I'm just going to drag it out just a little bit. I'm going to hold my dowels tightly together and then I'm going to start twisting them up. I'm going to do it a couple of times like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingers, my forefinger and my thumb on the side of my blending board. I'm going to lift my dowels up and I'm going to pull ever so slightly, which is going to draft the fibre. So we're not on the spikes this bit. I'm going to pull it out just a little bit and then roll a little bit more and then pull a little bit more, roll a little bit more. It just depends how thick you want your um, row lags to be. This one always comes out a bit thicker, my bottom one, because I had quite a bit of fluff already hanging off the edge. So I'm going to just keep rolling a bit and then just pull it away. Now, I don't know if you have to do this or not, but I like to do this. I just like to go with the fibres and just smooth them down a little bit. But look at that. So you can see it ever so slightly, just here where the blue and the yellow are meeting, starting to get a little bit of a green tinge, ever so slightly there. And then where the blue and the purple are, a blue, 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 the blue and the pink, I mean, it's starting to go a little bit purpley. So yeah, look at that. All right, let me just move my... Uh, blending board out of the way because I've been putting my Rolex in a tub. I'll just put that over there. You're now going to see what the Rolex are actually looking like when they're off the stick. Oh my goodness, I think they look amazing. Look at those! Look how different it looks from a bit of fluff on that blending board and then we've wound them tightly. Look! They look amazing, don't they? <laughs> I'm really excited to do this, to spin this yarn. I'm so excited. So because I've left one dowel slightly, like not in level, basically, I don't even know what I'm saying, but you know what I mean. I didn't have my dowels level. It makes it easier to then wiggle, wiggle one of them out. You've got a bit of leverage. So I'm just going to pull one of them out. Okay, it just depends which one's coming. This one's coming first. So let me just get that out of there. Trying to whack my computer screen. Sorry, I've just had to come off the shot a bit there because it's a bit long. So it's now left on one stick. And I'm just going to gently take the stick out and add it to my Rolag tub. Don't they look amazing? So 
what I'm thinking, because I'm still quite a newbie at my spinning, what I could do, I actually do have a solid colour. I've got quite a few solid colours that I could also do. And I could spin this and then I could spin a solid colour and then ply the two together. But I'm still such a newbie at spinning. If I had lots of the solid colour left on my bobbin, like maybe if I went to go use it a few months later and I've probably improved drastically by then, I might look at it and go, oh no, I am, I am not using that. That's terrible. So what I'm going to do, I'm thinking in my head, is what I did with this one. The same procedure that I did with this one because this is kind of similar colours, although not as bright, this one is. So I had like pink, purple, blue, uh, light pink and yellow I think is what I've done and I split these in half and I spun half of them so what this is what I'm going to do I'm going to spin half of them this way so that I start with the pink and then when I've spun all of those ones the other half I'm going to switch my bobbins over do a brand new bobbin and I'm going to start them pick this one up I'm going to start with blue first and then when I ply them together I've got more of a chance of a colour contrast going on just like what's going on here there's going to be moments where two colours meet that are the same but that's fine like here two of my yellows ended up meeting but that's okay I don't mind that yeah that's what I'm, I'm going to do and just see how it comes out but don't they look amazing I think they look really, really good. So I'm going to continue making my Rolex and then, yeah, once I get him on the spinning wheel and I'm feeling confident with myself, I might do another little recording to show you me spinning. <laughs> right, so I have done all of my Rolex. I have used every single bit of the fibre, apart from a few little, like, flyaways. I have managed to get it all in here. Woohoo! So I'm now going to literally half my Rolex. So I'm going to put, I've got to be a bit careful because some of them, where I've done them a little bit thin, some of them are breaking a little bit. So I think next time I should probably do them a bit thicker. But like I say, I'm still new. This is a whole new learning experience for me. I'm just taking you all along for the ride <laughs> maybe you might learn something from it too and think oh do you know what that looks like loads of fun i want to give it a go so let's just get these in here this one's a little bit delicate put that one on there it's fine if they split because once you start spinning um you can reattach it anyway although that's one thing i need to work on is when i'm attaching new fiber I'm not actually that good at it at the minute. That one's a bit delicate as well. Put that over there. So yeah, I'm going to keep separating these and I'll see you soon. Right, so I have separated my Rolex and I've split them in half. And can you believe it? There was an equal amount there. There was an even number. So this, that's equal, that's equal, which is amazing. I was then thinking, oh, what happens if I have one left? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin each of these on a separate bobbin and these are going to be called singles. And then what I'm going to do is ply the two together. So what my plan of action is that I was talking about when I was blending them up, and you was probably thinking, what's she banging on about? What I'm going to do is I'm going to start one of my singles with the pink end. And then my other single is going to be on a separate bobbin. I'm going to start with the blue end. And I'm hoping that when I go to ply them together, we're going to get some contrasting going on with the finished result. So that's the plan. So what we do is when we do our singles, we do them clockwise. So when I'm treadling, I've got to make sure that my wheel is going clockwise. And then when you ply them together, you then um, do it anti-clockwise and it helps set the twist. But I'll explain all that in a bit. So it's spinning time. 
here is my setup. So I've got my wheel, which is an Ashford Kiwi 3. Um, and I got that when I went to the yarn festival at East Anglia Yarn Festival. And I got it from the threshing barn. And it was amazing because I got to sit at it and have a little go of it. And I was instantly like, yes, I love it. Got myself a lovely little chair to sit at with a pillow because support is everything. Um, I didn't have the pillow for a little while and my back was just like, no, this is not good. So you need good support as well. A good chair, a good sturdy chair and good support. There are the Rolags, so they look beautiful. So if we come in a bit closer to my wheel, I have got on here a leader. I'm pretty certain that's what they call it. It is basically a bit of yarn that's about one and a half meters long. And you basically like slip knot it a couple of times around the bobbin. So it's nice and secure. And then I'm gonna feed this through the flyer and then down, and I just got a certain name, I can't remember what it is, but through this little hole here. And then it's gonna come out here, and then um, I can set my tension, make sure my tension's okay. And then you attach your yarn, I've still got, not yarn, your fibre, I've still got a bit on mine from uh, my last project. Attach your fibre to the end, and then that will then start bringing your fibre onto the bobbin. So I just reuse mine, like this is the same one I've had her on here a couple of times. I've just got to cut the end off and re-knot it and then I'm good to go. Okay, so let me come sit down. Um, I've just got to cut this end off here. Like so. And just put a little knot in there. So that makes a loop. Okay, so I can open that up and now I have a loop, which I can then hook my fiber into. So I've got a little hook attached in here, which is gonna help me get this through the flyer. So it goes, I've got two um, holes here. I mean, as far as I know right now, this one is like a little pinch thing. So I can move I don't know what exactly this is called, but I can move it down the flyer. They've all got, it's all got certain names. <laughs> I don't know the lingo yet, guys. <laughs> but basically, I pinch these two together and I move this down near the end of the bobbin. And then when this section starts getting full, I can then pinch it and move it forwards a bit more. It's probably a bit hard for you to see. But yeah, basically pinch and then move. So this is gonna go through this hole here. It's a black hole. I don't know if you can really see that it's black because I can see it's black here, but here it just looks metal. But anyway, let's hook that through here, like so. And then it's going to hook around this one on the bottom. And then I'm gonna bring it round to this hole that's here, sort of. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm still a bit fingers and thumbs, so I'm gonna come through the side. I'm gonna hook it through the side first, and then I'm gonna come through the very center and hook up that leader yarn and pull it through. Really, I probably should have put a new one on here because that could do with being a bit longer, but I think it's gonna be all right. Who knows? We're just blagging it. <laughs> Back again. Okay, so during my last spin, I actually got quite confident in what I was doing. But before that, I was having to pre-draft my fibre. I'm going to do it again now because I haven't spun for maybe like four or five days. I'm still a total newbie. I might have lost my knack. I don't know. <laughs> So pre-drafting the fibre is just gently pulling it out just a little bit. Now, the fibre has something called a staple length. So if I pulled it real far, it would just break off. Um, they do say to check the staple length before you pre-draft, but I haven't done that. So I'm just going to pull it out just a little bit. 
just a little bit. I mean, this is quite thin anyway. So I'm just pulling it out just a little bit, which makes it easier to draft when I'm spinning. But yeah, doing my second spin last time, I kind of leveled up <laughs> and my drafting got better. But like I say, it's been about four or five days now since I've done any. So I'm probably, I feel like I'm back at square one again. I feel all fingers and thumbs. But I'm sure I'll be fine once I start getting into it. So I'm just gently pulling the fibre. <clears throat> Excuse me, <coughs> still dealing with a cough, as always. So I'm just gently pulling the fibre apart, just so it makes spinning a bit easier. Okay, I feel nervous. I feel more nervous because I'm doing this on camera and I haven't done it for ages. Probably not the best idea, is it? Okay, so I've got to remember to treadle clockwise. I just go by this. I mean, whether that's right or not, I don't know, but I go by that. So I go, yeah, right first. Right foot first, I do believe, is clockwise. Left foot first is anti-clockwise. I kind of have to bring my left foot down first a little bit and then stomp down on the right one to get some... Uh, momentum going. Let me just wisp out the end of that a bit more. But yeah, this is meant to be a little bit longer and then you just give it a little, oh hang on, I haven't done it quick enough. Give it a little test run, just to spin it, make sure you can pull it in. Um, basically you've got tension here. I've got a little tension knob here. It just, I've got it on so slightly with this. If I'm like pulling it in or trying to do my fibre and draft it and this is just snatching out of my hands, it means my tension is far, far, far too tight. If I'm trying to get it onto the bobbin by pulling it in and it's not doing anything at all, then you need more tension. But I find with this wheel, I need barely any tension at all and it just gently feeds it in. So let me just open up my little opening there. I'm going to hook a bit of my fibre over the loop. It's probably going to be a hot mess. I'm just going to draft a little bit out already. By drafting, I'm just pulling the fibre back a little bit and I'm pinching with my left, my, yeah, it's my right hand, sorry. Pinching with my forefinger and my thumb and then I'm drafting out a bit of fibre and then once I get, once I get more twist on here, I'm going to glide my finger and my thumb along the fibre and that's then going to get that area twisted. Yeah, it's a bit hard to explain and I'm a bit far away really to explain what I'm doing. It's really hard trying to record this while I'm on my own. I think I might need a second person with me. But I'm going to get started and then I will show you a different angle, okay? Right, wish me luck everybody! So I've got to go left foot first to get a bit of momentum and then right foot. There we go. We're doing it. Okay. I'm just going to take it nice and slowly for a bit because, like I say, I haven't done it in a little while, a few days. I don't really need to draft my fibre too much here um, because it. I did make some thin row lags. Okay, yeah, I'm getting in the swing of it. <laughs> I'm just going ever so slow at the minute, ever so slow, until I start to feel a bit more confident in what I'm doing again. But we're off to a good start. We seem to be off to a good start, and I've got a little bit too much twist going on. Hang on, let me just stop that a minute. Just you stop there a minute. I've accidentally got... I've accidentally let a bit of the twist go into my fibre, which means I then can't draft it. So the trick that I learned to do with that is to twist it the opposite way and then that loop loosens it up and then I can draft it again. You know, am I going the right way? Yes, yeah, that way, isn't it? And then I can just pull out a little bit more to draft it. Hang on, it's not quite done it yet. Says me. Says me, look. Maybe I need to do a bit more than that. Yeah, here we go. Right, 
It's because I'm talking and not concentrating at the same time. It's quite tricky. I'm going to do a little bit more and then, yeah, record from a different angle. When it goes right, it is so relaxing. When it goes wrong, it's a bit frustrating, but it's normally something silly. Like there's been times where um, the drive belt that's on here, you're meant to like take it off when you're not using it or put it on a lower, like a lower notch. But the lower notch on here is the faster spin. I've got it on the lower spin at the minute. So when I, I move my drive belt and I put it on the faster spin because it's not as tight, when I'm not using it, sometimes I forget to put it back on the slow one. And then when I'm doing it, I'm like, what's going on? This is not real normal. It's going crazy. So for me, my troubleshooting has been like, I've got the drive belt on the fastest setting by mistake. Or one day I took my bobbin off and replaced that and I forgot to put the tension band on it. And yeah, it's little things like that. That's what it's been for me. Spinning in the opposite direction by mistake. So it's all coming undone rather than uh, spinning in, basically. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, coughing again. But yeah, it's, once you get into it, into a flow, it's just ama it's a really amazing feeling to be doing this. Me saying about my posture, I don't know if you can see me. I'm actually a little bit hunched over. I need to sit myself up a bit better. Okay, so my um, row lag has just kind of come away a little bit. <coughs> so I need to reattach it. And this is what I need to learn to do better because when I reattach it, I don't do it very well. This is something that I need to work on is reattaching. Now there's a few different ways you can do it. You can either attach it here and pinch with your pinch bit, or you can actually fluff it up a little bit and start spinning and that will join on. Like literally, I don't know if you can see that, but like do that with it and then it starts spinning and it joins it on. Do I dare give that a try? I don't know. Am I brave enough? I don't know. But yeah, don't laugh at me and my attempts, will you? Like I say, I'm new. Oh no, I've lost momentum, hang on. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're in, I think. Yep, yeah. we're attached. And it's actually gone well, even though I just panicked a bit. I don't know why I'm shouting. <laughs> I don't know why I started shouting. <laughs> oh dear. I'm nearly at the end of this row lag. I'm on the blue section. Right, I'm just going to stop there for a second. And then what I do is I kind of wrap it around my little hook that's at the bottom here. And just like split the fluff that I've got hanging here over the hook. And then I can get my next row leg out and attach it. Oh, it's very pretty, very pretty. Do you want to have a quick look? There we are. That is a single. It's not plied with anything yet. That is just a single. So that's what I mean by single. One bobbin, one single. I'm going to be doing two bobbins, which will make two singles. And then I'm going to ply them together. Exciting! Excuse my terrible recording. Uh, 
But I've just done my first single. Hang on, that's a little bit out of focus. Probably because I've got crazy trousers on. It's focusing on my crazy trousers. There, look at that. I am so happy with how this has come out. So yeah, there is my first single. I've now got to do uh, the other half. And I'm going to start with the opposite colour, which is blue. So I start with pink on this one, and then my other half I'm going to start with blue, and then I'm going to apply them together and end up with some crazy wacky yarn. Just how I like it. <laughs> both my singles and now it's time for plying that's the first one that I spun I think and that's the second one that, yeah yeah that's the first one no yeah that's the first one that I spun and I started with pink and that's the second lot that I spun where I started with blue so let's see what happens I feel like this one was a little bit messier for some reason my second one was a bit messier but now it's time to ply them together. In order to do that, I've got to spin them both together in the opposite direction. So these both got spun clockwise. Now I've got to spin them together anti-clockwise. I hope it comes out all right. Let's see. my two singles together and this is how it looks I love it it's come out lovely so I did end up with a little bit left on one of my bobbins I've got that left which you know I don't really want to get rid of so what I'm gonna do might be a little bit controversial here but I'm going to get this off the bobbin and wind it into a little ball and I'm gonna ply it together which I know is going to change the twist slightly, but I'm not bothered about that. Once I've got it all worked up as well, I don't think you're even going to notice. So I'm going to apply this together using this end and the centre end, and then I'll tie it onto this. I'm not bothered. Do you know what I mean? It's my second attempt. I don't really want to leave it either. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Watch this space. And then I'm going to get this on my Swift, um, maybe see how much I've got before I then set the twist by putting it in warm water for 15, 20 minutes. Exciting! Okay, so I have just um, used my normal ball winder to create this little bit here, which was my leftovers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this end and then I'm going to find the centre end. Hopefully it's not too far in here. I know it was orange. Or maybe it's pink. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to tie these two ends together. And then I'm going to ply. So it's going to come from the edge and also from the centre. And that is going to change the twist slightly to what this one looks like. But uh, that's okay. I can live with that. I don't want to waste it. So... That's what I'm going to do now. Right, where am I? I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, 
Okay, so I just plied that little bit and I got that much. There's a good few meters on here, so it was definitely worth doing. And the end of it kind of matches the end of this, which is even better added bonus. So I'm gonna tie these together and I'm gonna get them on the swift um, and then start to set the twist is the next section. But I need to get these off the bobbins first. This is where you really get to look at the yarn and be like, oh, exciting. <laughs> It's on the swift. There we go. Sorry, my swift's a bit squeaky. <laughs> oh, that sounds horrible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just secure this together. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to put it in some warm water for about 20 to 40 minutes, I think is what I'm going to do. And that is going to help to set the twist. So to be honest with you, it's actually not too bad, but sometimes it can still have a little bit of a slight curl to it. But mine hasn't actually come out too bad, so maybe it might only need 20 minutes or so. And that is going to help set the twist, and then you've got to be really impatient and wait for it to dry. Ah! Like air dry. That's like the longest part. But the sun's shining. I wonder if I can get it out on the washing line, maybe. I don't want it to blow away. <laughs> I don't really want to peg it either because you've got to be a bit careful with it. I don't know. I'll have a think about it. Right, I've got it off the swift. According to my calculations, there should be roughly 132 metres here. I hope that's right. <laughs> when I measured it, when it was on the swift, it was like 130 metres. And I've got 102 strands. That's how many times it wrapped round. So I think it's right. 132. That's what Google's telling me. I'm terrible at maths. But anyway, I am going to recalculate the yarn yardage after I have set the twist. Because that might have an impact on it. So let's get this in some warm water. Okay, here we go. Oh, let's push that in. That just feels really satisfying. I don't know why. Make sure that that gets nice and soaked. All the bubbles are coming up. I can't remember what that means, but that means something. <laughs> Let's get all that in there. I don't know if you can hear my dog barking. barking. Lenny the dog snoring in the background. Just a lazy Saturday afternoon. Oh, look, we've got a big bit there. I did get a few slubs in there, so I am trying to get a consistent yarn, but for what I'm seeing, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, hopefully. <laughs> it would be nice to have a consistent one, but this is my second go. So there, look how dark it's gone now it's in there. So yes, now I'm going to leave that in there for 20 to 40 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to towel dry it, just pat it very gently and then I'm going to let it air dry. I might put it outside because it's quite a nice day just to try and speed up the drying process. Um, I'll probably end up having a look at it tomorrow. Hopefully it's dry by tomorrow. And then I can do the yarn yardage again and turn it into a skein. Okay, this has been in here for about half an hour, I think. Maybe 35 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Lift it out. It's real heavy. Just going to very gently squeeze out some excess water. Don't wring it. You've got to be ever so gentle with it because the um, apparently the wool is very, very, very delicate, especially when it's wet. Okay. 
can't really fit it all in the screen because I'm so short. <laughs> right, I'm now going to move this across to my towel. Apparently, if you've got a salad wringer, these are really, really good to get out the excess moisture, but I don't have one of those. So I'm just going to gently pat out the water. I'm probably not going to get it all. First, big. first step, first step, do that. That's my daughter trying to be quiet, but no. obviously failing miserably. <laughs> Vlogging during half term. So I'm just going to keep doing this just for a little bit. Okay, right. I have just put it in the towel and give it a little dry. Now what I'm going to do is something called thwacking. So I'm just going to gently hit it against a hard surface and that will also help set the twist. So I might look bananas doing this, but here we go. I don't think I've got enough space actually. Hang on, I'm just keep the chair back a bit. Just really gently, but also not too gentle, but you just gotta go. Oh, I probably could have done it a bit harder than that, really. Probably could have done it a bit harder than that. I think maybe my chair is the best thing to do it on. I'm just going to go all the way around. Making my chair a little bit down there. I'm just going to do a full loop. There we go. I haven't really tied it very well at the bottom either, but hopefully that will come with practice. So, am I brave enough to hang it outside? Maybe I could try and hang it on a hanger and hang it on the washing line, because it seems a nice day. So, next time you'll see me, it's probably going to be tomorrow, hopefully, if it doesn't take that long to dry, and I'll wind it into a skein. <laughs> Okay, everything is done. I have just got it. Oh, oh no, I didn't. I didn't recalculate the yarn yardage. <laughs> oh no. I could always put it back on the Swift, I suppose. I've not put it away. Ah, I forgot to recalculate the yarn yardage. Well, anyway, look. Oh, it does look amazing, doesn't it? What did I say it was before? 132. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I know. I know what I'll do. Before I go to cake it up, I might do the yard yardage then. Ah! Can't get it right all the time, can you? Well, anyway, that's the finished product. Looks amazing, doesn't it? Right. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.